Hey everyone. Oh, I was about to say you did the last one. I'll do it, but it's I, it doesn't matter. You can go. You can right. do. All right, well, let's do it at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. What's up, hey, y'all? everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, back on with Kelsey Adventures. This is Kelsey. I'm John. Today we are trying the Stanley Parable. Kelsey has never played the Stanley Parable. I have played the Stanley Parable, and we are playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Is that different from the regular one? It's the regular one plus extra stuff. Uh, you should go ahead and answer uh, this question up here. <laughs> Which this way? There you go. I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. This question up here. Uh, have you played the Stanley Parable before? Uh, uh, no, I have, have not. You have not played the Stanley Parable. No, you have not. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. It is already barely visible. Sounds good. Hit confirm. Confirm. Please enter the current time. What time is it? 818? 818. Click, 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 click. Oh, it's PM. Oh, I need to go. There you go. Eight. Eight. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Good enough. Good enough. The You're... Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Why is it on that screen also? It's on that screen on that screen. Uh huh. It's on the screen on that screen on that it screen. It sure is. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uncomfortable. I don't like that. All right, begin game. N the the end is never the end is never this is the story of a man named stanley stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427 employee number 427's job was simple he sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard orders came to him through a monitor on his desk telling him what buttons to push how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, you're in the game. What? You're what? in the game. I'm in the I'm in the game? Yep. Am, am I? Ooh! Am I Stanley? You are Stanley. I am Stanley. I have no arms. You do not I have, have any no arms. arms. No. Um, can I interact with things? Yeah, you can click on stuff. I have no, I have no mouse, and no arms. How do I click on stuff with no arms? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I don't. Stanley like decided to number. go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Do you need a target? You need a, a target reticle with a help, or what do you What do you mean? A, a dot in the middle of the screen to. Oh. Okay. Well, you just shut the door. Where's the meeting room? Where's the meeting room? I'm going into room 420. Yeah, yeah. Stanley yeah. went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. Well, where is the meeting room? I can't read that. I don't know. Okay. No, 
was... I can't get into any of these doors. No, that was the way that we came from. Go, um... Yeah, go in the corner. That door right there is open. This one? That's where I was just at, isn't it? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I am dyslexic. I don't know which one's the left. Uh, <laughs> this one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Wait, what would happen if I went in the other one? Do I have the option of going into the other one? Uh, you went to the left when the door shut. Okay, 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 okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve the dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside of you. Take out passive aggressive. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header <laughs> and throw some bevel on the on all the text. Everyone is unique. You most of all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Yeah, there's some great there's some great writing in this one. Number of slides on this slide. Charts. Charts and slides. Slides. <laughs> um. I have money? Is that what this coffee is? Or you better, I hate Mondays. I hate Mondays. Rate of increase. Please, no more charts. <laughs> Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> Okay. There's some good shit, just... <laughs> the, the details in this game is great. The stock market is somewhere here. Colored in segment. Stripes! <laughs> 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 alright, 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 alright. We're going to the broom closet. Yes, we are. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. I don't know about this narrator. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other He's going in circles! <laughs> For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Ah! Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled, this is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. 
Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? How do I get Stanley out of here? He's awake right now. <laughs> Why is he still talking? <laughs> Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. <laughs> After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. No! <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Ah! Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Ah! Please, someone, tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> so congratulations, you found the anxiety ending. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, no. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Call somebody! What? What? What happened? You found the anxiety ending. What did I do? You, uh, so, in this game, in Stanley Parable, you are interacting with the narrator. I'm not All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? I'm not interacting Stanley with the decided narrator. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he He's had simply missed a memo. Yes, but what is he talking about? He's narrating what you're doing, right? Yeah. But he's also saying stuff that, of what you do before you do it. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few mo- But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left.
Good choice. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. Will cause death. The penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Oh. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. Ah! Really? <laughs> I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Through the blue? Uh -huh. right. Perhaps ah. you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Do I still don't think we're communicating. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. Wait, wait. Ah. Oh, wait. What do I do? What do I do? There's the blue yeah, door. Yeah, there's the blue door. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, light. Stanley. Take Ceiling it for a spin. Light. Which way do you want to go? No, I don't know anymore. <laughs> we'll go that way. Okay. It's so orange. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Feedback area. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? I yes? was engaging mm -hmm. with my surroundings. Wonderful have to do what you tell me to do yeah. based on the data from your previous playthrough i've compiled a new version and to be perfectly candid i think i've knocked it out of the park with this one let's can take I get a out look. of the office building no no i can't there's no doorknob on this door there is not This is you. <laughs> okay. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. 
Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. Okay. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Four hours? Nope, you get two. That's all you get. <laughs> you heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because well, the, it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of yeah. ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Bye. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <clears throat> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Changing games. All right. New game. Oh, ah, I'm out of the office. Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Ooh. Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower. Perhaps for some sort okay of twisted, this. erotic purpose. Yep. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. That what a like fascinating me. venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Yes, let's go. So, this is an actual game. Uh, this is called Firewatch, um, where you I've play as a guy who is on Firewatch for a... For a yeah. <laughs> you were going to say on fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, you're a guy who is uh, who's working as a Firewatch for a... Yeah. Like a, a like Smokey the Bear. For a thing. It's a park in Colorado, I think. Well, I'm not in the office, so I'm, I'm happy with this. Okay. It's it's Would you like okay, to play Firewatch? Is that another game I need to look up for you? Stairs. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. No, I never heard of it. Oh no. No, 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 no. It can't be. It is. It's an open world game. <gasps> Good God, quickly block it off. Yeah. Oh. oh. Thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that. That thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go oh, in any... Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> no. okay. I think this will be just the thing. I think I need to get you get you Firewatch. <laughs> You're enjoying that. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get is lost this... here. Now this oh. is game design. Oh, is, this, is this if you like that to get soccer with the cars? Game, is this mm -hmm. car soccer? I'm yeah. Impressed. I want to find a car! <laughs> and then ram it into other cars! Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Where? Okay, where, I'm where? seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game where sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports, sports ball. ball. Oh, yay, sports ball! We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together? Yeah! Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Where's my car? Where's my car? Boop. Boop. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm real bad at sports ball. Are you doing it? 
Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought, and I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls oh, no. makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. Oh, no. I'm going to running, try running, that. Running, 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 running! <laughs> I have a bad feeling! Yes! Okay. Oh, goodness, balls. that really does feel okay. amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, yeah. I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. Them. I'm insatiable. More balls! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You're having a blast with this, Stanley. Are you having fun? Is yes. this a real video game? Well, I sure hope you're having a good time, because guess what? It's over. That's right. Your little f- <gasps> Hold on. <laughs> you, you fell off a cliff! Yay! Where am I going? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. <laughs> okay, I didn't see that one. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Okay. Hang on, that's the way you came. Yeah, but there it, wasn't anything the in right? here. Oh, it's a oh it's a mirror or yeah. something. Okay. I wonder what he found. If what Creepy he wanted walls. was to be the leading man in his own story, well perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end, to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh yes, yes, I'll be back, there's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. So... Do we, do we just wait? We're yeah. waiting. It's... Okay. I'm back in the office! <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> okay, you wanna, you wanna put a pause on there? You want to come back to Stanley Parable later? Yes! <laughs> I'm going to get out of this place! Again! <laughs> Again. Alright. Alright, y'all. Well, uh, that's Kelsey being introduced to Stanley <laughs> Parable. Interesting choices that you made. Well, how would you expect me to make any other choices? Well, uh, you so you can follow what most people do on their first playthrough, that they, they do what the narrator tells them to do. Oh, he wasn't really telling me to do anything. It didn't seem like he was, like, until the very end when he was trying to argue with me. Mm -hmm. But at the very beginning, he was just saying what I was doing. No, no. It seemed like. Yeah, well, the, the first choice that you, that you get to make is you come to the room with the two doors. Uh -huh. And he says, go to the one on the left. Or, but the first time yeah, you went Yeah, but going through, to the one on the left killed me. I died. Well, that was because. I went downstairs when I was supposed to go upstairs. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a fun little game and seeing how many different endings you can get because there's a there are a ton of yeah I'm excited endings. I like it I like it well we're gonna play, we're gonna play it again a couple more times good. at least good yeah it was fun all right y'all right. well we will come back to Stanley Parable 
uh, at some point, and we will see you next week, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if you like us, do the subscribe thing, or if you like this video, you, thumb, thumb, YouTube's it, been around long enough. You should know how to subscribe already. Well, I mean, you, you just tell them to do that. Uh, that's true. That's true. Well, you you don't should have to tell you, them to do that. Okay. You should hit the subscribe button. <laughs> you absolutely should. I mean, it's a subscription, whatever. It's fine. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna mess with your algorithm, whatever. Do it. And if you liked us, you should also give us a like because, well, frankly, we're very likable. Speak for yourself. I like you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.